Okay, so in this video we want to look at composite functions. So let's say we have a function f which takes its domain to its range and another function g which takes its domain to its range. We want to look at the composite f of g. So the picture that I would draw for this is that we're first going to input through g and in particular we input the domain of g and then we'll output the range of g that then has to fit into the domain of f and then as a result we'll have the range of f um, unless we have to make a certain restriction here so the part that we're mainly concerned about if we're going to look at the domain and range of a composite function is this we need the range of g to be contained in the domain of f. So let's look at an example of this. It's best to illustrate it through examples. So find the domain and range of ln of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so the composites here, uh, if I want to keep the notation consistent, we have f of g. So here g of x is 1 minus x squared, and f of x is ln of x. The domain of G is R, and the range of G is minus infinity to 1. The domain of F is 0 to infinity, and the range of F is R. Now if we want to check the domain of the composite, we need to look at whether the range of G fits into the domain of F. So we need to ask whether minus infinity to 1 fits into 0 to infinity. Of course this is not the case so we need to restrict we need to restrict the range and the only way to restrict the range is to restrict the domain of G such that the range of G is equal to 0 to 1 because then it will fit into 0 to infinity. So if we look at the graph of 1 minus x squared which is of this form, then its range is in 0 to 1 on this region here. Now these intercepts are given by minus 1 and 1, so we can just restrict the domain of G to be from minus 1 to 1. In that way the range will be restricted to 0 to 1, by construction. That will fit into the domain of F and so the composite will be defined. So in particular the domain of F of G is equal to exactly the domain of G such that the range of G is contained in the domain of F. So we'll have minus 1 to 1. It's exactly following this picture. So we need, we can put whatever we can put into G, G will spit out some numbers. We need to be able to fit that into what's coming into F. If it doesn't fit, we need to go back here and take out what's coming out that's too much for F to take. So if we want to look at the range of the composite now, then we need to look at the range of F but now the inputs of f have been restricted. The inputs are now only 0 to 1. So the range of f is equal to the range of f when restricted to 0 to 1. Okay, if we look at ln of x, the graph of ln of x, then it looks like this and this is 1, so from 0 to 1 
we see that the range is from minus infinity to zero. And that's the range of the composite. So the range is minus infinity uh, to zero. Okay, let's look at another example. So let f be sine x and g of x be one minus square root of x. Determine the formulas for the composites together with their domains and ranges. Okay, so what we'll do is first write down the domain of f. Since that's just sine, we know that the domain is r. The range of f is just minus one to one. The domain of g is zero to infinity. And the range of g is minus infinity to one. Okay, so f of g of x, we just replace x by g of x. So I get sine one minus square root of x. The domain of f of g is the domain of g such that the range of g fits into f. So the domain of g is zero to infinity, but we need to check that the range of g fits into the domain of f. In that case, we see that this is indeed true. Minus infinity to one does fit into r. So the domain of the composite is just the domain of g. And so the domain is zero to infinity. And the range of the composite is the range of f when restricted to zero to infinity. Oh, well, restricted to the range of g. So the range of f when restricted to the range of g. So if we put minus infinity to one into f, uh, what will we find? Well, f is a sine function. So if we put minus one, uh, minus infinity to one, since sine just oscillates like this, it definitely achieves its level minus one and one. So the range will be minus one and one here. Okay, so let's do g of f, which is a little more difficult. So the formula for g of f of x is uh, one minus the square root of sine x. Now we need to check that the range of sine fits into the domain of the square root. Of course, this is going to require that we restrict the function because sine of x has to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. And if we know the sine function, if we remember these quadrants, then sine is positive here and here. So if I look at these regions, this is always going to be zero to pi. I could draw another region from uh, two pi to three pi and so on. So in particular, sine is going to be positive if we take the union of all k in the integers from two k pi meaning uh, integer multiples of two pi, all the way up to two k plus one pi. Which just means we go from zero to pi, two pi to three pi, four pi to five pi, and so on. So that's going to be uh, the domain of the composite. So if we look now at the range of g of f, well, we've got one minus square root of sine x, and sine x is only outputting values between zero and one. So what we'll do is we'll let y denote the, the outputs of sine. So we know that y is between zero and one. If we square root everything in this inequality, we just get zero is less than or equal to the square root of y, which is less than or equal to one. Now we'll have a minus, and then I'll get minus one is less than or equal to minus square root of y, which is less than or equal to zero. 
and then I just add 1. So I get 0 is less than or equal to 1 minus the square root of y, which is less than or equal to 1. So the range is going to be 0 to 1. And that's it for this tutorial. Let's just review what we covered. So if we're going to look at composite functions, we're going to look at the domain of the first function and check what comes out of that function. We need to check that whatever comes out of the first function can go into the second one. And then if it doesn't, we restrict the range. The only way to do that is to actually restrict the domain, so we do that accordingly. To find the range of the composite, we look at the range when the range of f when restricted to the range of g because the range of g is the new out uh, the new input for this function here so we looked at the domain uh, and range of ln of 1 minus x squared and also looked at the composite f of g and g of f when f was sine x and g was 1 minus square root of x uh, if you liked this video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more of this content, uh, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.